Shane Webb, and it's a pleasure to be with you this evening in worship. Today we will be looking at the book of Jeremiah, the very first chapter, verses 4 through 10. Hear now God's word to us. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am a huge fan of the book of Jeremiah and too often... We don't open that in our worship services. There's a few familiar verses, and this one about being formed in the womb is one of the, the key verses that most people know from Jeremiah. But I also like this book because the story of Jeremiah is an incredible story. And this prophet gets into a lot of trouble and faces a lot of terrible things. A calling from God is a strange and mysterious thing, and the ways that it can happen are endless. Tonight we'll break it up into five key elements of what a calling entails. But before we start with that, I would like to tell you about one of my friends. Ryan Papan. Now, he has a call story that's not too different from that of the prophet Jeremiah. For he was called at a very young age. He told me about when he was five or six years old, he had a dream and a vision. And in his faith journey, he has run away from his call and then run back to it. And he has been chased away from his call by the church. But he continues to seek out his calling for ministry. As you may be able to see, Ryan has many tattoos. In his life, he has had multiple piercings, and he's not one to apologize for his vulgar language. His theology was too broad and inclusive, and he actually believes that the church should spend more time on the street helping people rather than spending most of their time making themselves feel better in worship and study. So for all these reasons, he was labeled a radical and a rabble rouser, and he denied neither of those accusations. He finished his training at Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary and the church deemed him as too dangerous. The Committee on Preparation for Ministry actually said that they could neither conform, confirm nor deny his call to serve God. The mainline church deemed him unacceptable for ministry because they were afraid of him. So a passionate Christian man who discerned God's call in his life, completed seminary, passed all of his tests, and had notable gifts for ministry, 
was flat out rejected by the church. My friend is a minister who has been hurt by the church throughout his life, but he keeps coming back and he keeps finding different ways that he can serve even when he's told, uh, no thanks, you're a little too much for us. Now imagine the same guy sitting in the pews at your church. How uncomfortable would it make us? Well, the prophet Jeremiah also rubbed people the wrong way, especially the people of Israel. They were the chosen people, and yet Jeremiah came with harsh words. And Jeremiah has some of these key components of how God enlists his servants. And the very first one that comes into play in Jeremiah's life is God's initiating word. A call to ministry or service begins with God contacting us, calling out to us, appearing to us in a dream, speaking to us through other people. The Lord Almighty has a plan and a purpose set out for Jeremiah. And he has a plan and a purpose set out for each one of us. Jeremiah's calling is one of great proportions to be a prophet to all nations. And it is both a daunting and difficult task. Some would even say impossible. So let us pause there and move to the next key part of a call, which is objection. Jeremiah responds and tells God all of his inadequacies. Hold on, you're, you're asking me to what? Lord, you must be confused. I am too young. Others might say, I am too old. A very common excuse we hear is, I am too busy. Or, I cannot evangelize because I am an introvert. And one of my favorites, I'm definitely too busy to teach children on Sundays. And I definitely don't have the patience. That may be true. Some of you may have heard this, this saying that, God equips the calls, equips the called, or in other words, God does not call the equipped. God can use our minimal abilities that we have to both take our strengths and weaknesses in order to do and fulfill that which is impossible. All we need is to move past our stubborn objections that we all have, even though they might be well-grounded, and trust in where God is leading us. This brings us to our third part of call, chastisement. Now this isn't a part of every call, because hopefully we don't get stuck in the objection for too long. God reminds us that as creator, he knows what he is doing. Trying to explain to God why you are not capable is absolutely futile. This being said, many people of faith, including Moses, who reminds God that um, I cannot be a public speaker because I have a stutter. Which implies that God is clueless about Moses' speech impediment. So there comes the chastisement or the reprimand. Saying no to the Lord is like trying to say that you know better than God. So my advice is that when the excuses come to mind, gently acknowledge them as hurdles and get to jumping. 
it is important for us to stop stalling and coming up with excuses because it is time for us to do what we are being asked. I wonder if any of you have been stuck in your faith because you let your insecurities get in the way or you doubted your own abilities and your own giftedness that God has bestowed upon you. Which leads us into reassurance. With God backing us, what do we have to fear? Well, later on in the prophet's life, Jeremiah does face all kinds of suffering that is brought on from the people he's trying to reach out to. So part of his objection to becoming a prophet might have likely been his awareness that prophets were not well accepted in his time and that bad things often happen to prophets. Living out our call is possibly going to bring us pain. Be it the mockery of others or the hurt that is brought on when we are rejected for who we are, for what we hear God calling us to do. Yet friends, the Lord has promised us deliverance from those who might do us harm. This leads us to the final part, which is commissioning. Thanks be to God that God's vision is not limited by our sense of inadequacy, but that God can use small beginnings, young people, and small churches to do great and powerful things. No one is left out of God's possibility-rich kingdom. The smallest infant and the oldest adult alike receive divine visions for each moment and for each part of their life. And we are all tasked with listening and responding. So I ask you, are there modern day prophets in our mainline churches? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I believe that all Christians have a calling in their life. And it is usually not a one-time thing, but rather a reoccurring event that happens throughout our lives. The good news is that my friend, who's been rejected by the church many times, continues in his faith. He feels reassured by God, and he feels that he is commissioned to continue to do God's work, even if it's got to be outside of the church. Are our churches truly ready to welcome those who do not fit in? Sisters and brothers, I proclaim to you tonight that in Christ we have been called to reach out in love to strange, weird people, even our enemies. I would love to see us collectively and individually embrace our calling to make disciples of all nations as Jesus instructs us even those people we may not want to get that close to. I need the help of the Holy Spirit to accomplish this impossible task. But I know that God is support supporting all of us to do acts of love in our community, the likes of which have never been seen before. May we all take our calling seriously and embrace what God is tugging at our hearts for us to do. To God be all the glory.